It's a clear shift in our economic cycle. Amazon this morning announced that they're going to be laying off 18,000 people. This is the largest tech layoff in this economic downturn. And this comes after yesterday, Salesforce announced that they're gonna be laying off about 10% of their workforce. That's about 8,000 people. And Vimeo also yesterday announced that they're gonna be laying off about 11% of their workforce. And we also have other non-tech companies, notably Goldman Sachs, who are now warning about layoffs coming in their company. So we are seeing a shift in our economic cycle. Why is that happening? Well, people's incomes haven't been able to grow with inflation, and now you have the prices of things way up here, people's incomes down here, and so people are having to cut back on spending. When they cut back on spending at places like Amazon, now Amazon isn't making the money that they were before, and when they're not making the money that they were before, and they have expenses way up here, because over the last couple of years, we saw a huge boom in our economy. When the 2020 pandemic hit, we saw this little slowdown in the economy for a short period of time. And then the Federal Reserve Bank and the government opened up the money printer and started spending money like crazy. Our economy and our markets were flooded with new money. Now, this created a short-term economic boom. Everybody had money to spend, which then caused the price of things to go up because everybody had money to spend, but there was no supply. Nothing was being built, but everybody was buying things. So now the price of things went up, 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 which was okay because people's incomes were subsidized thanks to the government, thanks to the Federal Reserve Bank, all the stimulus, all the unemployment checks, all the free loans to corporations. So a lot of money was out there, which subsidized people and companies and this supported the higher prices. Now, we're still seeing the price of things go up, but people's incomes are going down. People don't have the free money from the government anymore, and people's wages aren't rising fast enough to keep up with inflation. Now we have this discrepancy, and this is where now we're seeing the slowdown in the economy where people can't spend the way that they could have before. People are not buying at the same rate that they could before. Now, people are still spending. People are still buying things. People are still doing that, but it's slowing down. And this is where now companies are looking at the trends and they're saying, oh man, in six to nine months in the second half of 2023, people are going to have even less spending ability. And we have to start planning for that. How do you plan for that? Well, you start cutting your expenses. And now you look at your expense sheet as a company and you say, wow, one, we really loaded up our expenses over the last couple of years because many companies went on hiring booms to make up for all this pandemic demand because everybody was buying things. And second, companies also loaded up on a whole bunch of debt because in 2020 and 2021, debt was cheaper than ever before. So every company said, I'm going to load up on hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars worth of debt because it's only going to cost me a few percent a year. If I can grow our company by 6%, we're going to make a huge return on our debt. So companies loaded up on all this debt, invested it in the company, or bought back their own shares. And now companies with that same debt are seeing their debt expenses skyrocket. Because this corporate debt isn't like a mortgage. It's not a 30-year fixed rate debt. It has variable interest rates, or the interest rate readjusts every few years. So now companies are either seeing their debt start to readjust, or they're going to see their debt readjust in the coming 12 to 24 months, and they're saying, oh no, our debt expenses are going to double, even if we don't increase how much debt we have. So now we as the company need to start aggressively paying down her debt while cutting costs, while revenues are falling, because that's just our economic cycle right now. We're not seeing the same money flow into our markets because the Federal Reserve Bank is raising interest rates. Why are they raising interest rates? because inflation is so high. And so you're starting to see how all these different factors are starting to finally tie together. Now, we've been talking about this for a long time, and we cover this in Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter. If you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I'll put the link for you down in the description below. But Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter where every day my team's breaking down what's happening in the stock market, the housing market, crypto, the global economy, and our own economy into a fun, witty, and easy-to-read email. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs, the link is down in the description. You know where it is below. So we have the Federal Reserve Bank working to raise interest rates because inflation is so high. Now, this is where we have the double-edged sword. 
Because on one hand, this high inflation is causing a slowdown in the economy. People can't spend the way that they could have before because everything is so much more expensive now. But at the same time, the higher interest rates are intended to lower demand. And what does that mean? It's intended to make things more expensive because the Federal Reserve Bank wants to cool down inflation. See, inflation is driven by demand and supply. When there's a limited supply, but everybody can buy everything, the price of this thing will go up. If everybody in America could afford a Lamborghini, Lamborghini prices would skyrocket because they can't sell a Lamborghini to everybody. And that's what's essentially been happening, where everyone's had money to buy everything. Now, the Federal Reserve Bank is saying we need to cool down demand. How do you cool down demand? You got to make the Lamborghinis more expensive. And the way that they do that is by controlling interest rates. So the Federal Reserve Bank is raising interest rates aggressively, which hurts the economy because now less and less people can buy Lamborghinis because now it's more expensive to borrow money. It's more expensive to operate a business. It's more expensive to go into debt as a consumer, but it's also go expensive to have debt as a business owner. And so now we have the largest debt bubble ever. We have more household debt than ever. We have more con corporate debt than ever. We have more national debt than ever. And now the interest rates on this debt is rising. Now, if you have a mortgage and it's a 30-year fixed rate or a 15-year fixed rate mortgage, it doesn't really matter what's going on with interest rates because your payments are fixed. But most of the debts out there aren't fixed rate mortgages. Like your credit card debt isn't a fixed rate. Your corporate debt isn't a fixed rate. Our national debt isn't a fixed rate. So what we're going to see happen now over the next 12 to 18 months is more and more of this debt is going to start to readjust. And as the debt readjusts, expenses are going to rise. Now, that's not a big deal, assuming you have enough income to cover the expenses. But what we're also seeing happen is revenues and incomes are starting, starting to fall because people aren't spending. The more you spend, the more somebody else makes. That's how our economic system works. If you go and spend money on Amazon, Amazon makes more money. If you don't spend money on Amazon, Amazon doesn't make any money. So Amazon relies on people having money, so that way they have money to spend at Amazon. And what they've been seeing happen, especially over the last part of 2022, is that people have slowed down their spending. And that's one of the things that they were talking about recently before they announced these layoffs, is that they had a worse than expected last quarter of 2022, where they weren't seeing enough sales to justify all of their expenses. And so that's why now they're starting to cut back. They need to save up these costs because they're not making enough money to pay for all of these things. And so we're seeing revenues start to fall. And yes, this has primarily been in the tech sector so far because the tech sector is one of the most sensitive to interest rates. But it's not isolated to the tech sector, although you have a lot of analysts out there saying that it's not going to, this economic slowdown is not going to leave the tech sector. Well, we'll see what they're saying in 12 months. But right now it's isolated kind of to the tech sector. But that also means that 18,000 people who lose their job are going to lose an income. And if you lose an income and you can't get a job for a little while, that means that's 18,000 people who are going to have less ability to spend. And you can start to see that if you have less ability to spend, some of these people might not be able to make a car payment. They might not be able to make a housing payment. You can start to see how that affects different parts of the economy. Now, we're just talking about Amazon. But now when you start to add in all the other layoffs, you can start to see that if we continue to see more layoffs, how that can contribute even more negatively to the economy. This is why... A few days ago, Michael Burry tweeted out that we haven't seen the peak of inflation. What he's saying is when we see a slowdown in the economy, because you know the Federal Reserve Bank and the government and a lot of other entities are saying that we're going to avoid any real slowdown in our economy, that we're going to see a soft landing. But what Michael Burry was saying is that's not happening. We're going to see a deep slowdown. And when we see that deep slowdown, the Federal Reserve Bank is going to change their mind because today the Federal Reserve Bank said that they don't expect to cut interest rates in 2023. They might hold interest rates, but they expect to raise interest rates in 2023 multiple times. But they said do not expect any interest rate cuts. Now, what Michael Burry is saying is when we enter this recession, whether it's you know, whenever it's declared, because even though it's not declared yet for all intents and purposes, the vast majority of Americans are already feeling like they're in a recession. 
But once we enter this deep recession, that's when the Fed is going to have no choice but to then pivot and start cutting interest rates. And we probably will not have solved the inflation problem before they do that. And that's where you're essentially saying, oh yeah, inflation is a problem, but right now the bigger problem is the recession. This is what we've been talking about. It's the balancing act, where right now the Federal Reserve Bank is saying inflation is more important than the recession. But what a lot of people are saying now, which you want to pay attention to, is what happens if the recession becomes a bigger deal than inflation? Today, today the Federal Reserve Bank is saying, if that happens, don't worry about it. We're going to focus in on inflation. But a lot of people are saying that the Fed doesn't have the backbone to do that, and that the Fed is going to be pressured to then start stimulating, to start cutting interest rates, to start doing more quantitative easing. Now, when you start stimulating and doing more quantitative easing, when you already have a high inflation, what does that mean? Higher inflation. That means it's going to cause even more pain to the economy long term, and it's going to be even more painful to bring inflation down. So this is where you want to, one, be aware of what's happening, but then second, be financially educated. That way you can, one, stay up to date, but then also capitalize on opportunities because this is going to create more opportunities. But understanding what's happening, that way you can make smarter decisions for yourself, your family, and of course, your community as well.